Major Kehoe, I understand you have three new reports on file, which in your opinion, you have them currently on file, and they're new reports, and these, in your opinion, would convince every person in this country that flying saucers are a fact. Is that correct? They should convince a lot of people because of the, the names involved. Tell us about it. I told your uh, interviewer in Washington that I couldn't mention the names because they were too high. One of them is a top scientist in this country whose name would be known to everybody. Well, why wouldn't he want his... Because he's afraid of the official ridicule. He's afraid of official ridicule? That's right. More afraid of official ridicule than of possibly uh, alerting the country to a serious you national danger? You'd be surprised how many people give us reports and they say, please keep my name confidential. Well, I'll give you one report which came to us. The name has to be left out. In 1951, a UFO circled the fleet in Korean waters. It circled it at high speed, and they launched several planes to try to get a close in on it. They got a radar lock on. That is, the radar was guiding the planes toward the object. Mm -hmm. This was picked up by radars on 14 naval vessels. This object circled about, uh, oh, for a half an hour or more, and then it took off at a speed way over in excess of 1,000 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. This report was certified, and uh, nine members of our Board of Governors saw it, signed it, and agreed that it, they had seen it, and agreed to the contents. Yeah. Uh, there is another report that just came in from four top missile designers, or engineers, at one of the big plants in this country. They saw an elliptically shaped object and two small round disc-shaped objects fl flying with it over California, November 11, 1957, at the speed of at least 5,000 miles an hour. These men are well qualified to know what they see. With broad daylight, not a cloud in the sky. There have been cases even where the Air Force has shot at these things. Now, if there's nothing there and they don't exist, uh, why do they shoot at them? You mentioned Mr. Horner. The day after Mr. Horner said that the Air Force was not concealing anything, a Captain Gregory Oldenburg, a public information officer at Langley Field, refused to let an ad be inserted in the Langley Base Flyer, their newspaper, which asked that anybody interested in UFOs please communicate and form a little group. He said, I must refuse to do this because this, the dissemination of information on UFOs is contrary to Air Force policy and Air Force regulation 200-2. And I have a copy of it here in case you want to see it. Well, Major Kehoe, I must say that the Air Force tells us they don't question your motives, but they do question the accuracy of a good deal of your information, and for that reason they say you ha have been, and were they to in a sense, uh, throw open an invitation to all people who cite UFOs to get in touch with them once again. They get all kinds of cranks, hoaxers, and so forth, and you see they run down every one of these sightings, and it has cost them a tremendous amount of money to no avail over the past few years. That's what they told you. That is what they told me. Now, sir, in a moment I'd like to ask you this. In the past few years, millions of flying saucer enthusiasts have become excited about the stories of two men, George Adamski and Howard Menger. Both of them claim to have seen flying saucers. Mm -hmm. Menger claims to have been given a ride in one by some creatures from Venus. Adamski says he's chatted with a man from Venus in the California desert. I'd like to get your reaction to those stories, and we'll get Major Kehoe's reaction in just 60 seconds. All right, Major, about George Adamski and Howard Menger, both men claim to have talked with men from Venus. Menger claims that he's even taken a ride on a flying saucer. Do you believe them? No. You think they are hoaxers? We do not accept any reports of these so-called contactees without more evidence. We've asked them to submit their claims and take a lie detector test. We don't throw them out. We simply say we'll give you a fair chance. I think that's the least important part of the picture. The most important part is the weight of evidence from hundreds of competent people, and I'd like to name a few. Captain Richard Case, American Airlines. Captain C.S. Childs, Eastern Airlines. Captain T. Kravitz, TWA. Robert Dickus, TWA. Colonel Donald J. Blakesley, U.S. Air Force, a wing commander. Mm -hmm. I could go down a list of uh, people who know what they're doing, and they're still on duty, they're still flying. Major Kehoe, what would you like to see done about flying saucers that is not currently being done? What steps would you like to see taken? I think the American people should write to their congressman and insist that open hearings be held by the Senate Committee on Permanent Gov on the Permanent Committee on Government Operations, which has been looking into this for six months. An Air Force I spokesman told us this last week. He said members of the Se of the Senate Subcommittee have talked with us already, and they have shown no interest in conducting any hearings on this issue. 
I talked with the chief investigator within the last two weeks. I gave him a lot of information, and I gave him data on one case where an airliner was sent to chase one of these things, and the, and the passengers kept in ignorance of it at that time. That involves two government agencies beside the Air Force, which has re refused to release the report. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this. If you were to get, if, they, if the committee were to get Rupert, Major Fournay, several colonels around that time, Major General Garland, who was on the project, it would be a big revelation because the Air Force is simply treating the American people like children. They don't trust them with the facts. You know, here is an interesting, I think, an interesting question, Major. The United States and Russia have started sending satellites into the sky, and we may be hitting the moon with a rocket <coughs> soon, possibly Mars. You believe that creatures from outer space have space stations on Mars. What's going to happen when we start firing rockets at the moon or at Mars? That question's already been brought up. Uh, we expect to have a base on the moon within the next five years. Uh, it's possible that there is a base on there. I don't say there was any proof of it. Is I it possible we're going to start an interplanetary <laughs> war when we start sending our rockets to the moon and to Mars? In 1955, General Douglas MacArthur said the next war would be an interplanetary war and we'd have to be unite against people from other planets. One uh, last question, Major Kehoe. Have you ever seen a flying saucer? I've seen them tracked on radar. But I take the word of about 800 of the best witnesses in this country and abroad. But you yourself have never seen a flying saucer. I've just been a reporter and a careful one. Thank you very much, Major Donald Kehoe. As you've just heard, the flying saucer controversy is deadlocked in contradictory statements and interpretation of facts. As for Major Donald Kehoe himself, like most of us, he's never seen a flying saucer, which may just make him like a mystic who's never seen a ghost. But one must give him credit, he has much faith.